Hey everyone, welcome to the Tom's Hardware Podcast for March 29th, 2022. As always, I'm Tom's Hardware Editor-in-Chief, Avram Pilch, joined by Raspberry Pi expert, Ash Puckett, Associate Editor, oh, I'm sorry, Ash Hill, uh, I'll get it, uh, Associate Editor, Les Pounder, and our special guest this week is Gary Croft, who it, who has found a way to make the Raspberry Pi HQ camera work really well as a microscope. Hi, Gary. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, everyone. Right. So, a um, bit of background, maybe, about myself. So, I'm from the Wirral in the UK. Um, I'm a digital innovation manager, um, background in science, um, I do a lot of lab automation and software development in my main role. Um, I've been using the Raspberry Pi pretty much since they've been out. Um, probably about six months after they first appeared on the scene, I started using them. I have the Pi 1, 2, 3, 4, and the zeros. Um, but today I've hooked one up to the microscope uh, using the Pi HQ camera. Um, it's a hobby of mine, the microscope, since I was a kid. So it became like a, a natural progression to hook it up to a computer and start doing some filming because I wanted to be more creative with the computer rather than just mm -hmm. constantly software developing. That's so, great. You so Gary, you, yeah, Gary, you said that you started as a kid. How, how did you get into playing with microscopes as a kid, really? What right. Was path into science? So my grandfather gave me a World War II microscope when I was seven. Um, I'm not from that era, obviously. But, um, yeah, so I started messing about with it just as a child in the back garden. It was an old one with a mirror, so we had to reflect the sun onto it. Um, and, and that gave me an interest in biology. And then I went on to university to study biology when I was older. And I got a new microscope then, um, but that was way back 25 years ago or so. so. And recently I treated myself to a new one. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you decided to build your own kit because, you know, I'm not an expert in microscopes whatsoever, but I would just think you go out and buy a microscope with an HDMI output and there you go. Why would you build your own kit? It's not a full build, so it's an off-the-shelf microscope. It's a trinocular microscope, um, so it's got a camera fitting on the top like a tube. Yeah. Um, the adapter for the lens is off-the-shelf that screws direct into the Pi HQ camera. Um, it might be worth sharing the screen so I can... Yeah, absolutely. Can you, bring, can you bring her up, Les? Uh, well, that view is a bit better, probably. So it's got a reduction lens that screws directly onto the HQ camera. And it slots straight in. Um, I've got two microscopes. The other one's a stereoscopic one. This is the compound. Um, down here, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's a bit dark. Mm. It's running off an SSD. Um, it's with a capture card at the moment. Mm -hmm. And if I go in, I've wrote my own software for it. So just switch the camera Ooh, for the mouse. Then that's the raw output from the Pi HQ camera. That is clear. What creature is that? That's a water flea, Daphne. Yeah, bring it in. That's amazing. Now you say that that's clear. It, it's not really actually. So the default settings of the Pi camera, when I uh, the first picture you put up of my um, background, you'll notice there's just large buttons on the screen. Uh, so it was like camera on, camera off, start recording stop recording, take picture. Um, I basically used the entire Pi camera module and built it out. So now I can play with all the settings. So the first one we can do is rotate it. Okay. So what level of magnification is that? That's very low. It's only um, 40 power because it's quite a large creature. You can see there's some microscopic things in the background, paramecium. Yeah. Right. Can you get all the way in and see an individual cell with this? Oh, yeah. So if I go in. Wow. That there is its heart. 
That's wild. And that's only 100 power, so you can go to 200. And then you can start to see the, the structure of the cells. And then I can go to 400 power. Okay. That's amazing. If I just dial back a second. And just reiterate to viewers while we're watching this, this is live video. This isn't recorded. Unless you're watching the recording. Anyway. No, no. <laughs> That yeah, is amazing. I normally watch catch up TV in here on YouTube, but then when I built out the software, so I can adjust all the brightness myself directly now with sliders, right. so I can really sharpen the image up, give it some more contrast, increase the color saturation. And this made the real difference was the sharpness. So if I move that rail, hopefully you can see how much clearer it's gone. So you can see the mouth part there, there's little fine fibers. Just change the lens. So what about the Raspberry Pi makes it best suited for this project? Um, the cameras for microscopes are quite expensive. And the quality of the cameras that you get on microscopes are not great. Um, so if you spent about a hundred pounds, you'd get probably four or five frames per second a HD. So it'd be really mm -hmm. jerky. Um you need to go up to about 360 pounds to get a camera's you know similar quality now this microscope's not expensive as they go it's about 260 pounds you can do dollar conversions for me i guess um, right so how much did all the equipment that you needed uh to build this cost well, i have the pi 4 already right. um but you know they're about what 70 70 pounds or so at the moment so that, right. if you can get one um, the camera was uh, 50, the reduction lens is 30, and the microscope was 260. So you could use a much cheaper microscope, don't get me wrong. Um, I've got a trinocular one, so I can view down it. Um, if we just change the view a second, you know, I can, I can live view it itself direct through as the camera. Yeah. But you can get a monocular one. This would effectively work just going straight in an eyepiece. This, but you suffer a little bit. You mm. just need to adjust the settings and right it up. But yeah, it's the same effect. Yeah. Just try not to kill the camera. Yeah. That is amazing. I just hope then, that thing doesn't get away and invade your house. Ah, uh, it's not too bad. It's about one millimeter big, though. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see that on the, the normal camera. These are 3D printed filters you can put in. So if I just slot inside and then open up the diaphragm, then you start to get real like sci-fi views. Yeah? So it's called dark field. That's neat. That's brilliant. So uh... that green track is its uh, digestive system. It's full of algae. So how do you, um, how would you differentiate, like, would you say, this seems like it's a lot better, but have you, are you familiar at all with Pimeroni's uh, microscope kit for Raspberry Pi? And how does, yeah. how does your solution I mean, they're better? In small magnification values, I think. Um, mm. I don't know if you can look it up online, but this will go, this microscope will go to 2,000 times through the eyepieces and 1,000 with the camera. Wow, it's a, it's a lot different. So, if is it, went through... so is it sharp enough? Like when you were showing us, uh, like 400, 200 power, four hundred power is a little blurry. Just me. I don't know if that's just because of the broadcast. But are you able to get like a really good picture of the inside of an individual cell? Um, individual cells probably pushing it. Um, there are single cell creatures. I don't know if I got any to hand. It's whether I can zoom in. This will be way out of focus a second. Just trying to go through the power levels. Um, and also, most of the things I film are quite large. So I use smaller lenses. But with um, microscopes, you need to pay big money. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the edges of that where it's, the color's slightly uh, blurred out? Yeah. yeah. Chromatic aberration. So on a cheaper lens, you'll get quite a lot of that. So when you go up to 
anything up to sixteen thousand pounds for a microscope, you're paying for the, that level of detail. Ah, uh, I see. Oh. Uh, so the so the you said you use the lens that you use for the camera is is what? It's an off-the-shelf reduction lens for microscopes. Um, I can tell you the brand if you want, but yeah, I think Tommy is saying, "Can you drop a link to the Pi camera that you're using?" And obviously, Tommy, it's the Pi HQ camera, but the lens I think is the key element. The lens here. is just a reduction lens, so I picked it up off Amazon. But it's made by a company called Amscope. I'm just putting the dark field back in. What were some limitations or obstacles, things that came up you didn't expect along the way that impacted the final setup here? So for me, it was um, the software. So out of the box when I first started using it, I was using Raspberry Still and Raspberry Video just to get a live feed. Uh, yeah. But the objective really was to try and make videos. So I had to broaden out the code to capture video more or less on demand. So if I just turn the camera off for a second, then in the code itself, it's quite substantial. Now that I'll kill the software. Um, started off by 100 lines of code. It's around 400 now. So it builds out every single feature of the Pi camera um, with sliders and a GUI, buttons. Um, but I was doing a workflow onto the Mac. So I set up a Samba share. And the software creates every time I start it a folder. And inside the folder, I get a sequence of videos. Um, and I've also coded it at the top to convert each video. So instead of it being H264, I had to drag it over to the Mac. Then I had to uh, use Handbrake to change it into MP4. And then I used my video, video editing software to process it. Yeah. Um, but I actually managed to get it all coded in now, so it does it on the fly. So every time I stop recording, it will convert the video straight into MP4. Nice. Very nice. So you're doing all also, on a Pi 4, aren't you? Yeah, it's on a Pi 4. If I you did away with the, the video, if you did away with the video encoding part, could you just do all the live preview and all that with something a bit less powerful, like a Pi 3 or a Pi 2, do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, you could run in Raspberry Pi uh, the Raspberry Still and Raspberry Video, if you wanted to, just for viewing. Mm -hmm. um, but my objective with this it was really to do filming. Yeah, so I wanted to have complete control. So it's gone back to default settings now. Yeah. So and just... you chose to use Pi Camera Python library. Yeah, it's because I've used it in the past, um, so I was familiar with it, yeah. and I tried. When I set this up, there was still a bit of a bug with the new uh, Raspbian, I think, with the camera. Yeah. I don't know if you documented that, but it, so I went for the legacy mode and got it working straight away with that then because um, I was more familiar with that set setup. So I imagine now it's all fixed. I could redo it in the, the latest version, but um, for yeah. me, this was a, a finished project. You know, the objective is to film for YouTube to make my videos and do creative stuff, so yeah, I true. probably won't take it much further. I mean, the, there are the new Lib Camera library, so that replaces Raspy yeah. Still and Raspy Vid. Um, and there is a new Pi Camera library, Pi Camera 2, but it's completely different to Pi Camera 1, what you're using. It's not been right. developed by Dave Jones anymore. It's, it's all in-house at Raspberry Pi. But an interesting parallel, look, the guy who created Pi Camera, Dave Jones, who's been a guest on the show, uh, he developed the Pi Camera software because his wife, Holly, does work just like this. She works with microscopes in science labs. Right. It's an interesting parallel. I don't know if anyone else has been doing it. I, had, I didn't look. It was just um, a natural progression when I saw the price of cameras. Yeah. I'm quite familiar with the Raspberry Pis to do it this way. I'm just trying to see that. You know, that's a tie. Wow. Yeah, that's that's just really incredible. So what do you foresee as some of the use cases 
uh, for this? Do you think folks will be using it in laboratories or do you think it's more for students? It could be um, because because of the price point, if you think about it, you get a computer with a Raspberry Pi 4 as well as a high quality camera, you know, not shy of 120 pounds or so. Whereas normally they'd have PCs, cameras, and they'd have one, and then they'd normally put on a big screen so everyone can share it. So you could almost go to the level where children could have their own set of beach, you know? So. But yeah. it was more for me. The only thing I want to improve at the moment with the software is that this here is using the uh, preview. So I can't broadcast it. So I've had to use a capture card. Okay, so what I want to try and do is get the actual feed of the video. I'll just change screen a second so I can see this. Um, I don't know if you want to drop it. Yeah, so ideally it's inside the GUI. And that way yeah. if you share the screen or take a screenshot, you'll capture it. Because if I screenshot that, you get nothing because it's on the GPU. Um, yeah. So that's the bit to do. And I also have this vague plan of using OpenCV on it as well to try and do some automatic capture on the motion, so grids around them. Um, but that might never come. Um, busy person. So it's all down to man hours. That's awesome. You should really reach out to Dave Jones and ask him about capturing the video live. There'll probably be a way to do it, and he will know. It's his, his library at the end of the day. Um, he's, he's called Waveform80 on Twitter. Okay. Have a look. If you just bring the screen back up, I can go over to the other. I've got a stereoscopic one. That might be able to. There you go. So we've got the camera on. Wrong mouse. So this is for much larger things like bugs. And if I just rotate that, you might have an idea what it. Ah, uh, yeah. What it is. So that's a spider. spider. Yeah. So these aren't as powerful, um, but they use differently. Unfortunately, the camera view is not as good as the eyepiece because it's almost like a set of binoculars when you look down it. Right. Uh, so you get a 3D view. But what I was going to do is start taking some photos and stack them. So you can just do stacks of different focal points and get a better overall image. Wow. Um, I also built in zoom so I can zoom actually with the camera, not just the microscope. Yeah, that's very, very cool. So how has this project changed the way you approach developing things on the Raspberry Pi? Um, well, I've never built a Python GUI before. Okay. Before. Yeah, so that's all new to me. Um, I've used, I don't know if it's Tkinter or Tkinter, mm -hmm. the way you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, Has that come up before? Yeah, I don't know. I think Tkinter is the is the way. That's how I say it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the code is, you know, I built a full GUI with it. It's not a glorious one. It, you know. I'm a very lazy programmer. I just like to get my objective done. The objective <laughs> wasn't this, it was to make videos. So I just wanted to get it working um, and started filming. I've been enjoying putting the films together. I put my own music on them and everything. So right. I just put it back. Oh, that's great. Do you see it as only being used for looking at sort of microscopic life forms? Well, uh, you could put circuit boards under the stereoscopic one. Yeah. Oh. I, don't know, I don't really have any. That would be fun, getting the die shots. Right, yeah. Really nice, really nice. The expensive way to do it, I think. You can use... Um, I've got a USB one somewhere. Yeah, I've done some basic shots with all our Pi circuit board with Pimeroni's microscope a few years back. Right. And you get decent quality with that. That's okay. Yeah, so you don't need a high power. So the stereoscopic one goes from four to ninety. You know, so it's it's a bit excessive. 
for circuit boards, I'd say, but um, you can get a $100 one off Amazon with a built-in screen pretty much that does it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. cool. So speaking of other cool things you can do with a Pi, Les, this week you've been learning how to scan barcodes with your Pi? I have indeed, yes. I've been going back to a former life when I worked on a checkout many years ago as a young man. Yeah. Scanning barcodes to get grocery through the till. And I thought, well, okay. Here's something new to play with. It's a barcode scanner from uh, SB Components. I'm going to go to the overhead camera so you can see it. And it just got me reminiscing about a time when you know barcodes are a really easy, simple way to get data in quickly. I thought, what can I use this for? Well, I could scan in barcodes from items that I have in the house to test, but also I could make a cataloging system if I wanted to. But this is the board in question, SB Components RPI Barcode Reader Hat. It's £50, so that's about, what's about 70 or $80 in conversion, something like that at the moment. It's a lot of money, but it's an all-in-one unit. So we've got the scanner at the front here. Let's just move that. There we go. And we have a buzzer to show that the scan scanner is working. We've got a tiny OLED screen. It's, uh, let's see, 280 pixels by 135 pixels. So not massive screen at all, but enough to display simple data. And we've got a GPIO output here. So let's have a play. I've programmed this to react to two games from my collection. So Medieval for the PS1 and Wipeout 2097 for PS1, also known as Wipeout XL in the States. So when I scan a barcode, you'll see on this screen, it changes from the Tom's Hardware logo to a screenshot of that game. So if I scan it now, you hear a beep. And there's a screenshot. We'll do it again because it's quick. And we'll do Medieval next. And there we go. So really easy Python library to work with. Had a few problems to start with, but managed to work my way around them and fix a few bugs and report the bugs to the people who create this board. It's good fun. Yes, it's expensive. You can get handheld scanners pretty cheap these days, but this is an all-in-one unit that you can just plug in somewhere. It's ready to go. Also, with the GPIO exposed, I can plug in extra bits and pieces, so extra components. So I've tested an ultrasonic sensor, an HCSR04 Plus, or a P will work, because they're three volt tolerant, so that the scanner will turn on when someone goes near to it. So rather than having it just constantly firing out and beeping and making noise and light, it's there, ready to scan the next object as soon as an object moves in front of it. I've taken it off for the demo tonight, otherwise it's be constantly going off. <laughs> but another neat little feature of this, you'll see a micro USB port here. This can run completely off the Pi. Plug in the USB port to your Pi if you want, or another computer. Program the barcode reader with a special barcode. And it changes from RS-232 serial into keyboard input. So it becomes like a virtual keyboard. So when I scan an object, it just types in the data as in plain text and presses enter as if you're in a spreadsheet or in a normal document. So you can catalog all the barcodes one after the other really quickly. So tests are still ongoing. I've got one more test to do, which is testing uh, another board on top. So as you can see, the GPIO is exposed on the top. I want to see if I can plug in another board and use it and have barcodes controlling another thing. For example, Explorer hat from Pimeroni to have motors turn or lights turn on, that sort of thing. But so far, so good. It's a nice little board. Uh, so do they give you the scanner with the board? The scanner with the board. So the, the barcode scanner, yeah. All in one unit. Do you have a shot of the scanner? No, that's the scanner there. Oh, that is oh. the scanner. That, that, that is a scanner. Oh, we're expecting some kind of like external handheld. Yeah, I was expecting a wand or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, no. Let's go back to that camera. There we go. That is a scanner. That's all of it. It's tiny. So it's about, it's one thumb. There we go. Now we've got a never a ruler when you want one here we go and also some shameless advertising for raspi io there we go so it's about two centimeters wide and 
about 14 mil, 1.4 centimeters deep. And it just connects to the actual hat via this flat flex cable. That's doing all the work, really. The rest of this is just gubbins to put it all together. So is there a little red light that comes out of it? Yeah. So if I go back to the shot again, there we go. And it's not a red, it is a red light, but you can't really see it on here because it's, it has a white light as well, which is to scan, sorry, to illuminate the barcode to scan. It's just out of shot. Let's try and get it in shot. There, you can just see it on my little finger, just a bit of the red light. Uh... So you've got a white light to illuminate, so it's got a bright area to see. And then the red light will be the scanner to scan the barcode. Uh, but yeah, what... you, you can get barcodes hand scanners, so the ones that you'll see in the supermarket. Yeah, um, for about forty pounds. So for fifty quid, an all-in-one unit that has a screen and it's a lot neater. That's quite a decent price. Is it compatible yeah. just with the Pi Four? Any forty-pin Pi. Mm -hmm. All it's using is I squared C and SPI, as far as I can gather. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and serial as well. Sorry, RS232. Yep. So will it work with my QCAT? Uh, possibly. Is a QCAT uh, Pi powered? No. Does anybody, <laughs> does anybody here or in our audience remember the QCAT? Ah, one of the great... I actually don't have one. I kind of wish I did for just for the heck of it, but then I would end up throwing it away. So there, back in like 2000, it was the weirdest one of the weirdest failed gadgets of all time. It actually didn't use USB either. It was serial port. That's how old school it was. It was a barcode scanner that looked like a little cat. And they were, were giving it away or selling it so that if you got a magazine, the magazine would have a barcode in it and say, like, for more information, scan this. And you'd scan it with your QCAT, and then it would open a link on your, on your PC. So a very uh, complex solution to a very simple thing. Like just tell somebody to go to the link, but instead they give you, they had QCATs and you could scan, you know, you, you'd scan something in your magazine and it would open uh, It would open something. Yes. Now, if you want to do that, they have phone apps for that. Um, but the QCAT is a famous, see Dan Smith says, I had a QCAT. I don't know if it's still in the basement. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's one of those like cute, uh, you know, cute uh, footnotes to, uh, to, tech, to tech history that I will never forget the QCAT. But anyway, yeah. I bet you someone has made a QCAT work with a Raspberry Pi because it is the ultimate in, uh, in retro tech. If um, it's serial, it'll work. It'll just connect by UART. And as long as you know how, what speed you're going at, no problem. Beer Goggler asks, does it do QR codes and other barcode fonts? I can see two questions for Beagle, I'll answer them both. Okay. Will it scan from a mobile app? If it's a standard barcode, then yes, it'll scan from a screen. Uh, QR codes I haven't tested yet, so I'm going to test that. It doesn't mention anything about that on the product specif specification page on SB Components website. So I'm going to make an assumption as no, but I will test it with a QR code. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Gary, would you would you use have any use for a barcode scanner in your in your um, microscoping? Not in the microscope, but in work. Yeah, definitely. In the labs. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely systems for checking in, checking things out. So that that is very cool. Yeah, uh, my yeah. college did that. You had to scan a barcode to get into college, and it registered you to say that you're in attendance. That was in the uh, mid '90s. That's how old I am. Oh uh, well, indeed. I mean, now I guess you would more likely use a magnetic strip, but um, yeah, but, but yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's always really cool when we find new ways of doing da data entry and collecting data. And barcode scanning is a, a time tested one. Uh, so that that is really cool. Well. Uh, that's all the time we have this week. I wanted to thank Gary so much for joining us and showing off this amazing project. Uh, we've covered it on our site, but where's the best place folks can uh, go to keep up with what you're doing? 
I would say YouTube. Um, I haven't got the link handy, but if you search me up on YouTube, I've started all my videos are there. There are a couple of the kit, um, but I'm not really doing uh, presenting videos. It's actually films, okay, with music. Great. And, of course, I want to thank all of you for uh, listening and watching. We will be back here at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. UK time next week with another exciting guest. And we will see you all then. Bye, everyone.